So now let's move on to isolated points. So given that S is a subset of R, a point C, which is also a member of R, is called an isolated point of S if there exists delta greater than zero such that the delta neighborhood of C given by the open interval C minus delta C plus delta intersection S is equal to a single element C. Now what this primarily means is that a point C is called an isolated point of S if the intersection of the delta neighborhood of C and S is equal to a single element C. Now at this point, let's assume that let's assume that a set S is made up of the open interval A, B union a single element C. Now let's represent this on the real number line. So we have this to be the real number line. This is point A, point B, and then point C. Now for this interval, you realize that this interval is open at both ends. Therefore, we are going to represent A and B with open circles. So this is the interval AB and then we have a single element C. So union a single element C. Now because C is part of the set, we are going to represent that with a closed circle. Notice that the interval between B and C is not part of the set. The interval between B and C is not part of the set. Now back to this theorem. So we are trying to say that a point C is said to be an isolated point of S if the delta neighborhood of C, which is given by this interval, intersection S, which is the set in question, is equal to a single element C. So first of all, let's try to find the delta neighborhood of C. So the delta neighborhood of C is given by the open interval C minus delta C plus delta. So we can have this to be C plus delta and then C minus delta. So this interval is the delta neighborhood of C that is given by this interval. So the delta neighborhood of C is the region between these two points including C. Notice that the only element of S within this region is C. Therefore, the intersection of the delta neighborhood of C and S is equal to a single element C. Therefore, we conclude that C is an isolated point of S. Now, if you watch the previous video, that is the video on limit point, you realize that the limit point of this set S is given by the closed interval AB. So the limit point, the limit point of S is given by the closed interval AB. Now this is so because if you take any point in between these two intervals, including A and B, you realize that the intersection of the delta neighborhood of that point and S contains infinitely many points. Therefore, we say that the points between this interval, A, B, and then A and B themselves are limit points of the set S. So C is an isolated point of S and the closed interval A, B 
at the limit points of S. Now let's move on as we solve a couple of examples. Now let's solve these examples. 1. What is or are the isolated points of the set A, B and C? So let's start off with A. So for A, we have the set S, which is equal to the single element 0, union, open interval 1, closed interval 5. So we are going to find the isolated points in this interval. Now let's represent this set on the number line. So we have the single element 0 and that is part of the set. So we represent that with a solid circle. Union, we have point 1 and then 5. Now the interval is opened on the left hand side. So this becomes an open circle and then it is closed on the right hand side. So we have a closed circle. So this is the set S, the representation of this set on the number line. Now from the previous section, we can infer that the only isolated point of this set is going to be zero. Now the reason being that the delta neighborhood of zero intersection, the set S, will result to a single element, which is zero. Now let's try to find the delta neighborhood of zero. So the delta neighborhood of zero is given by the open interval zero minus delta zero plus delta. Now we can simplify this as negative delta delta. So that is the open interval negative delta delta so this is the interval given by the delta neighborhood of zero so this is the region of the delta neighborhood of zero now inside of this region the only element of s here is zero therefore the delta neighborhood of zero which is given by the open interval negative delta delta intersection s is equal to the single element zero therefore the isolated point of the set is zero So what about the interval between 1 and 5? Now for any value between this interval, even including 1 and 5, the delta neighborhood of each of the values here, intersection S, will give you a set that contains infinitely many points. Therefore, any value in between this interval, or better still, the endpoints 1 and 5, cannot be an isolated point of S. Now the closed interval 1, 5 are called the limit point of S. However, 0 is said to be the isolated point of this set. Now let's move on to B. We are given the set S, which is made up of elements. That is the single element 0, union, the set 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and so on and so forth, through to 1 over n, and so on and so forth. Now we are going to find the isolated point or isolated points of this set. Now let's try to represent this set on the number line. So on the number line, we have the point 0. And we have point 1, 
Now 0 is a single element and 0 is part of the set. So we are going to represent that with a closed circle. And also represent 1 with a closed circle because 1 is part of the set. And then we have 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 is less than 1. So this is 1 over 2. We have 1 over 3, which is also less than 1 over 2. And then moving to the left. These are all parts of the sets. So we are going to represent them, or each of them, with a closed circle. Now let's focus on one. Now the delta neighborhood, the delta neighborhood of one is given by the open interval one minus delta one plus delta. So let's assume that we have this to be the interval one minus delta one plus delta. So that is the interval given by the delta neighborhood of 1. Now you realize that this whole region is the interval given by the delta neighborhood of 1. And then inside of this region, the only element of S is 1. Therefore, therefore, the intersection of the delta neighborhood of 1 And S is equal to a single element 1. Therefore, 1 is an isolated point of this set. Now, the same applies to 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and so on and so forth. Now, as the value of N becomes bigger, as the value of N becomes bigger, the limit approaches zero as the value of n becomes bigger the limit or the sequence approaches zero now let's try to find the delta neighborhood of zero so the delta neighborhood of zero is given by the open interval negative delta delta so that is delta negative delta now the intersection of this interval and S is going to be this region. So the intersection of negative delta delta and S. Now S ends at this point at zero. So the intersection is going to be this region. The intersection is going to be this region. And then you realize that the intersection or better still this region contains infinitely infinitely many points that is the interval between zero and delta between zero and delta it contains infinitely many points therefore zero cannot be an isolated point of s so zero cannot be an isolated point of S. Therefore, we say that the isolated points of S are all the elements of S except zero. So the isolated points of S are all the elements of S except zero. Now let's move on to C. So to C the set S contains elements 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 
1 over 8. Now this is a finite set. Now we are going to find the isolated point or points of this set. So let's represent this set on the number line. So we have the elements 1 over 2. So 1 over 2 is bigger. So 1 over 2 and then 1 over 4. 1 over 8. Now because all these elements are members of this set, we are going to represent each of them with a closed circle. So all these are members of the set. Now for all these elements, the delta neighborhood of each of the elements intersection S will produce a set that contains only a single value, that is the value itself. So if you want to find the intersection between the delta neighborhood of 1 over 8 and S, then that set is going to contain a single element which is 1 over 8 itself. Now the same applies to 1 over 4 and then 1 over 2. Therefore, we say that the isolated point of this set S is the various elements we have here. Therefore, the isolated points of S are all the elements of S. That is 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8.